Water. Wallet. Snacks. Keys. Headphones. More snacks. All the snacks. There's a lot you need to carry when it comes to running, but how the hell do you do it? Well, we've done a fair few races in our time that involve running packs, so welcome to Running Packs Explained. Yes, we've broken it down into four categories. We're going to go through shorter runs, longer runs, commuting and multi-day. So you might want to take a hydration pack out with you to carry water. When you run, you lose a lot of fluids through sweating and dehydration can cause you to feel tired, it can cause muscle cramps and can lead to reduced endurance. So by taking water or electrolytes out with you, you can help to replenish those fluids and help yourself perform better. But you might also want to take other stuff out with you on the run. More on that later though. We want to hear from you what you use to hydrate. Do you use a pack? Do you use a handheld? Do you hide it in a bush? Let us know in the comments down below. Okay, so first up, let's talk about short runs. So the length of a short run will really depend on you and your own running experience. Generally, the rule is though that if you're going out for longer than an hour, you'll definitely be wanting to take some water with you. However, if you're heading out on a shorter run than that and all you want to take with you is your keys and your phone, but you don't have any good pockets, then something like a flip belt can be a really good solution. Moving up to anything sort of longer than that, you'd be looking at a running pack. So in the same way that you would uh, take on uh, hydration during a run at a major event where you'd have a cup, a similar sort of thing, you'd just carry them with you. We'd always um, recommend that instead of taking massive gulps and trying to drink as much as you can of these 500 milliliter uh, flasks, little sips, little and often is definitely the way forward, especially in the heat. Um, this is the rub one, so this is one of the more minimal um, capacity packs. So this is a two litre of which one litre is the actual flask themselves. So you've got a little bit of space on the back, maybe for a very light waterproof, and then you've got some zip pockets in the front where you can store your phone and your keys, but pretty much limited to just a few items. You might be thinking how much water do I need to take out? Well, the recommended guidelines is that if you're running for over an hour, then you should be trying to take on 100 to 250 millilitres of water per 20 minutes. I am terrible at this. I am so bad. So having a hydration pack there and knowing if you've got a 500 millilitre flask, knowing that you need to be getting through that every hour really helps me in races when, if I get to an aid station and I haven't drained both of my flasks, I know I'm not doing very well. Yeah, it's a little pat down of seeing how, how full <laughs> yeah. are they still, which is yeah, quite great to have that little reminder yeah. constantly there. Um, so yeah, when you, we're also talking about hydration. Once you're running for longer distances, you'll need nutrition, so something like a gel or a bar. Um, again, you're wanting to look at something that can take a slightly larger capacity. So this is a Solomon, uh, where again, you've got much larger pockets at the front and you've got a larger literage at the back. So this is a four liter, so you can carry a lot, a lot more kit in here that you can include your gel, that extra layer, that waterproof, and whatever you might need while out on the run. This also could be a great solution for if you're going to park run. It's a really warm day, you want to take some water, you're going for a coffee afterwards and you want to take some spare clothes. You've got a little bit more room than you necessarily do in the RAV one to be able to take a spare change of clothes as well. Speaking of carrying extra layers, when it's cold and you don't want to go out for a run, I love to have the option of just taking an extra layer with me that I could start running in and then take off after five minutes when you're like, no, okay, actually, I, will, I would have been just fine in a t-shirt. So packs like this Kerbar 5 litre one from Harrier are great because they've got so much storage in the back. One tip that I would always give is that if it is cold and you want to take out layers, take lots of layers rather than just one big coat because it's so hard to get the temperature right when you're running. If you're out for a long time, you want to have multiple different layers, mainly so that you can layer up if it's really cold, but also if one of them gets wet, that doesn't mean that you've got nothing to keep you warm. Yeah, definitely. And one thing I really love about the Harrier packs is the amount of different pockets they have. So there's a lot of different ways you can customize where you put things and also, one thing that no other brand does that Harrier do is you can pick the colour of your flasks, which might seem like a really novelty thing, but if you live with someone who is also a runner and is maybe not as good at looking after their bottles, they're <laughs> very clearly yours and they have a wide opening as well, which is something that I always look for in um, a hydration uh, pack flask, is that when you get to an aid station, get them out easily, fill them up really easily with a large opening, close them up, in, gone. Get off my bottles. Exactly. <laughs> So now onto long runs. So hydration packs are great when you're getting out and doing your shorter trainings, but when you're moving into longer runs that might be somewhere more remote where you can't get hold of water and snacks at a local corner shop or wherever, a bigger pack is gonna be a lot more useful. So we've got a fair few options here. One of the big 
tips I would say when you're moving into carrying more stuff is if you carry some electrolyte tablets, having one of the tablets to drop in one of your flasks is a great way of keeping your electrolytes topped up. I usually have one that is water and one that is electrolytes. It's just remembering which one is which. Yeah, mix and match, you get a little surprise. People also quite often like to carry salt tablets with them. So using this Osprey Dyna 15 as an example, it's got lots of different front pocket options. So you could have one which has your gels in, one which has your salt tablets in. It's just a good way of staying organized whilst you're running and knowing where everything is. It's also, I love, got waist pockets as well, just for added extra bits of storage. You'll be surprised at how much stuff you want easily accessible if you're doing a long race. Yeah, especially when it comes to long race, your brain might not be working as best as it could be. So having different pockets for different things that you clearly remember where you put everything is super helpful rather than having to take it off, rummage through and try and find that item that you're desperately needing in that moment of time. I remember when I was doing my ultra in Thailand, there was one pocket which was kind of like this zip one where it's on the side and you can kind of forget about it. And I was a good like 30, 40 kilometers in doing a really steep climb. I found that pocket and it had the best snack that I'd packed. It was honestly a highlight of the whole race. It's like finding a five pound note in an old pair of jeans. so good. <laughs> So yeah, obviously you can carry your water on your front in the, the flasks. Pretty much every single pack that we'll talk through has, has that option, but you also, a lot of them will have hooks in the, the back of the pack, which you can hook a, uh, a bladder onto. So this is an example of a, a bladder. Uh, and one of the top tips is if you run near anyone who has a pack with a bladder in, um, it can get very annoying when you hear just constant sloshing of the water, which basically when there's too much air in it. So I'm gonna try and do this without messing it all up. So turn it upside down and then suck all the air out. That's a horrible then... noise. I no think noise. It's so much better. There is nothing worse than running next to someone that has a sloshing sound. Yeah, it's like carrying keys or yeah, money. If you didn't think you needed a wee, wait till you run next to that. <laughs> You will need one. Um, another pack that's really good, has loads of pockets in it, is this North Face one. Other items that you might be looking to take if you're doing a slightly longer or more extreme race includes poles. So this has like little bits at the bottom where you can slot your poles into. Also, if you're thinking about food, you're probably gonna be wanting to take on 15 to 30 grams of carbs every kind of 30 minutes. My personal favorite if I'm doing a really long race will be using bars and rather than using gels, go to kind of chews. Um, um, or real food, to be honest, because you get flavour fatigue. So I tend to go towards more kind of real food as opposed to synthetic food. But it's good to have a mixture of both. And this North Face 12 litre pack, I know we've said pockets, but I actually kind of like the fact that this just has one huge compartment at the back where if you want loads of different options, if you're maybe heading out and you want to test out lots of different food options, you can just fill it up to the brim, have a stop, <laughs> the best thing about ultras and like longer races is that times are out the window. So have a good time, take lots of snacks and just munch your way through. You'll find a lot of different packs will have different ways of attaching the poles. So with the North Face one, you have a slide in bit there. Some of them will have them as front clips, but we also have an example of ones that have a quiver. So like a bow and arrow where you just slot them in and they stay within there. So you can either grab them from the top or just unhook it and bring it around. Um, one top tip that I always do with my poles is attach a bit of gaffer tape because you never know when something might fall apart and you need to stick it back together again. I've actually used it as bandages as well, um, just to keep myself together and not falling apart. <laughs> um, but talking about sort of not falling apart, this is a pack that actually does fall apart. So this is the Innovate pack, which um, has a 12 litre overall capacity. But one thing I love is the fact that with just a few slick movements, you can actually unhook the pack and it becomes a two in one. So this whole back part becomes something you can either leave, you know, a aid station if you're doing a race that has um, a station where you can leave packs or even just leave it in your car if you're doing a training run and do a figure of eight, which is what I tend to do for a lot of my long runs, where you can leave stuff in your car. So if I'm doing something that I know I'll be running maybe into, into nighttime or I'm gonna need extra layers, I chuck everything I'm gonna need, so like a head torch, warmer layers into this and run with this pack. And so I can simply take this pack off, attach it all to the back, and then I'm ready to run again. I actually wore this pack, which is why it smells a little bit, uh, at Comrades uh, just by itself. And one thing that a lot of these packs are getting better at as technology and innovation moves in is the breathability. So you can see a lot of these packs will have this like honeycomb look, which just allows the pack 
to be breathable because obviously there's a lot of sweat going on uh, down your back um, if you're sweating like me um, but also having a, a bit of weatherproofing as well so a lot of them will have weatherproof sections or they'll be entirely weatherproof depending on what pack you look at but it is something to bear in mind if you're carrying something that isn't waterproof like a map um, or um, electronics like a head torch that isn't waterproof. We're talking about a lot of stuff here and price might be at the forefront of your mind at the moment. So if you are looking for an option that is a little bit cheaper, then we would suggest you go check out the Everdict range or the range at Decathlon because they have lots of good kind of cheaper budget friendly price points, but you still get a lot for your money. So it's got loads of pockets on the front, lots of different storage bits for your phone, snacks, gels, everything that we're talking about. You might find, we'll come onto this a little bit later, but there are some races that will have mandatory kit lists. And so it's quite useful when a pack comes with a whistle because that's one thing already ticked off and they're usually attached to the pack as well so you're less likely to forget it um, and I also love how this Evenit one again just has a huge pocket at the back it's actually also got a secret hidden pocket um, with a zip so if there are any valuable items I always start a race and then realize that I have a necklace on and then I'm always looking for that zip pocket that I can put in because I don't trust myself to not <laughs> to not lose it during the race um, and it's got nice handy stowaway as well so if you are running with a jacket and you don't want to take the pack off and undo the zip you can just shove it in the back as you're running. One thing that's great about these packs is um, that you've got three customizable sections that you can actually attach the pack to yourself. Mm. Uh, I certainly find with some packs where there's no ability to move it around because I am a larger runner they don't fit quite right and it ends up feeling like I'm just wearing a bra uh, where you want something basically the main aim of wearing a running pack is you don't notice you're wearing it. be getting out there and testing it in the same way that we would tell you to test your shoes your nutrition before you go and take on a race it's really really important to go out and test your packs as well and that might be where you find oh actually this top strap I'm gonna move it down one because then it's not getting in the way or I'm gonna move it up so that I feel more secure and my bottles don't move about as much it's really really personal to you so get out there test it and that's why we're giving you loads of options today but should we move on to the next one yes the third category is commuting commuting is a fantastic way to make sure you can tick off your training plan by adding those miles into your daily working routine we would definitely recommend building up to this because you'll be carrying your laptop your clothes for work etc make sure make sure there's a shower at your work you don't want to be one of those people but <laughs> it's a great way to add in it doesn't have to be the entire commute you could run to the tube and then catch the tube in for the rest of your time but just make sure that you're not adding these miles on top of your training plan that this becomes part of your training miles yeah definitely it doesn't have to just be commuting to work either you could use running as a form of transport to get to different places is, I wouldn't mind if you turned up James for a coffee. Absolutely <laughs> it depends how many miles you've done beforehand. The first one that I want to talk about is this incredible set from Stolt. So they've got a slightly simpler commuter backpack, but they've also got this pairing. If you're someone that runs and cycles, I think this is really cool. Mainly for this insert, which I've been using, which you can fill with so much stuff. So the idea behind this is that if you're someone that commutes to work and then has to put a suit on, we obviously come to work dressed like this, so it doesn't matter if the clothes are scrunched up and thrown in a bag, but you've got this nice nice little kind of hard shell box that you can put your suit in. It comes with a little bag to put your dirty clothes in afterwards. It's got a rain cover. And I just think it's really clever that you can put all of your clothes in here. That then inserts into this slightly bigger bag and then there's a laptop separate compartment at the back. You've got a waist strap, handles that pop out so you could just carry it and tuck the handles in if you didn't want arm straps. The one thing that I would say is that compared to other hydration vests, you obviously haven't got space for bottles, you haven't got as many pockets on the front. So personally, when I just use this as a bag for coming into work, I do notice the difference in pockets compared to what I'm used to to hydration vests. But I was really impressed with how much stuff I was able to fit into here whilst also running and it feeling really secure. So usually if I commute to and from work, I will take all of my stuff in the day before, leave it, run home, run back, and then I don't have to worry about carrying anything. But actually, this is changed my mind because it feels really close to your body it doesn't feel like it's bouncing up and down it's a great way to get some of those easy miles ticked off your training plan whilst commuting from work and it also doesn't look like a running pack which mm. you know some people will love having a pack that looks like a running pack but actually having something that is a bit more stylish I really stylish. love this stylish stylish snazzy, snazzy. Might be another word we would use <laughs> but it is fantastic also to have just that way to, to store your laptop I I've done a few miles where I've come into work and then I run back to the train using my, my the pack I use for, for most 
ultra runs, but it doesn't have this sort of sleeve to add things in, but it definitely does look like an ultra bag. This has done every, every long run uh, I've done really has been using this pack because it's massive and I love overpacking. So you obviously you can use a lot of these for commuting, but when you're moving into larger capacity like this, these are made for multi-day runs. Right, we're now moving on to my favorite of all the categories, ultra running and multi-stage ultras. So obviously when you're running these longer distances, these 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 250 kilometers over multi-days, you're gonna to need to carry a lot more kit. The race I refer to mostly is Marathon de Saab. I did it a couple of years ago and I had to carry all my kit, including the food that you'd need for the entire thing. So dehydrated food, your sleeping bag, your roll mat, you name it, I had to go in the pack. So the ability to make sure you can fit everything in is so key. Definitely trial and error comes into play here and making sure that you have everything you need easily to hand because mental games play such a, a massive part of a race. You kind of do or die by these kind of things. So having a pack that you can rely on, you know exactly where everything is, when you need it is so key. 100%. So Marathon de Saab, you'd never talk about that. Another huge race that is 100% on your bucket list, I'm not sure whether it's on mine yet, is UTMB, which is a race in France, really famous, 170k, really long. So the mandatory kit list is equally long. I'll put it up on screen now so that you can have a look. But I want to know, James, do you reckon you could get all of these items into your pack faster than I could? So there's not many things on this channel that I'm faster than you at but I do back myself for packing things quick. Oh, you're backing yourself? I'm backing myself. Right, well, let's do it. Right, starting in three, two, one. Go. Start with all the items that hopefully I won't need. First things first, I need to get the hydration in. Just immediately scuff it slightly. Trousers going in, beanie, waterproof jacket, gloves, hat, all the medical stuff. There's a dry bag to keep everything nice. So waterproof trousers, buff, hat, waterproof jacket, and a nice waterproof bag. Bowl cup. These two little bits go in the zip pocket there. Knife, sport, whistle, Vaseline. Vaseline. Oh, too slow. Too slow. Okay. Back. Cup, cup, bowl. Head torches. Torches. Food, more food. Snacks. Oh, come on. Snacks. Along with my phone. Phone. I'm so slow at this. Time. That was way more stressful than I thought it was going to be. What? 102. 102! Yeah. Thank you and good night. He might beat me in an ultra but I'd beat him packing for an ultra. <laughs> I've let myself down, I've let you guys down. Most importantly, you've let the pics down. So hopefully that's given you lots of top tips for choosing a hydration pack for whatever race you've got coming up. We've shared our tips, now we want to hear from you. Yeah, don't click away yet. Do you actually want to win one of these packs? Well, let us know what you're training for down below and we'll pick one of you at random to win one of these packs. And if you want to learn more about trail running, head to this video here where Sarah and I run you down the top trail shoes of 2023.